Today you're supposed to apologize to every naked savage anywhere on the globe because you are more prosperous, because you've earned your money. You have to feel guilty and apologize for it while he hasn't and doesn't intend to learn from you. He just wants your money. That's what we're being taught. Why are we being taught? Because the ruling philosopher today in Harvard and everywhere else is Immanuel Kant. And that's the real villain of our age. It's not Karl you mean, Marx. You mean he's the one, huh? He is the Kant one. Kant is the one. Yeah. Okay. It's not Karl Marx, and it's not even religion. So I do not approve of religion, as you know. But those are not the villains. The villains is Immanuel Kant, who preached that man's mind is not valid, that the things you perceive are not there. They're not real. Things in themselves, as he preached, are something which exist in another dimension. Your world is only phenomenal, as he called it, and then there is this noumenal world, which you cannot perceive in any way, whatever, and that noumenal world is the true reality. Only you can't perceive it, so you better live here on Earth and do your duty. And uh, your duty is some kind of voice that comes from these other dimensions, which you can't know, well, how does he know? He doesn't tell you. But he tells you that uh, morally you have to do your duty. What does your duty consist of? Of doing things in which you can take no possible interest and no advantage to yourself. You know that he is even worse than an altruist. An altruist would tell you, you shouldn't be happy, but you should sacrifice for other people and then your moral. Kant goes beyond it. He says, if you do things because you have any goal, whatever, even the welfare of others. Your uh, action is not moral. Or as he puts it, it has no moral significance. To be truly moral, you should do things out of which you get nothing, whatever, neither for yourself nor for others. If you can achieve that kind of uh, being a total zero offered for being eaten by any cannibal, then you're moral. Now, that's the philosopher who rules today's life. If that is what the universities are preaching, Kant himself and all the endless variations of him and the derivatives from him, all modern philosophy are little illegitimate Kantians, if you know what I mean. If that's what children are taught, once they leave college, what do they bring to them? What you see today. We're kind of reaching the visible climax of Kantianism. They take dope, they try to kill their mind in every way possible, they leave range of the moment, they have no values, no goals, and no selfishness. Well, they're terribly unselfish, because they haven't got one independent idea in the world. The philosophies of the Western world have been going progressively more and more towards mysticism uh, ever since the Renaissance. The Renaissance was achieved was the intellectual result of the Aristotelian influence, the influence of Aristotle's philosophy, which in effect destroyed the Middle Ages and broke the way for the Renaissance. But ever since then, while men, while the culture in general, were achieving incredible progress culminating in the 19th century, on the basis of that Aristotelian influence, the intellectuals, ever since Immanuel Kant, were going progressively more and more against reason. The trend started, of course, before Kant, but I consider Kant the crucial destroyer and the crucial turning point. He was the philosopher who undercut the validity of reason. Uh, he did not really succeed, but his is the most skillful system of pushing reason off the philosophical scene altogether, and to the extent to which other philosophers and intellectual accepted his basic premises, to that extent, they have been moving towards a noumenal, mystical world ever since. Well, what in particular about Kant's system of philosophy do you think was responsible for uh, the trend that we see today in philosophy? The uh, very cumbersome, very complex, and very false and phony system of dividing man's intellect, man's mind, from reality, 
are declaring that what we perceive is only an illusion created by some special kind of categories and forms of perception in our own mind by declaring and allegedly proving, allegedly, uh, that we can never perceive things as they are, which simply means that any object which is perceived is thereby false. If you, as an object is perceived, it means our perception is incorrect. It was, in effect, an attack on the whole concept of consciousness, not only human consciousness, but any consciousness. It was the denial of the reality or the validity of our perceptions.